Hi folks, today we're gonna to go over the 80s. Uh, there's a little bit of bell work here. Uh, where do you find the times to uh, go to Open Lab and get help? Well, you can find that on our doors. You can find that in the front of our unit pack. You can find that in the room. You can find that on teacher schedules. So there's many answers to that. Purpose of needing a 75% or better on quizzes and tests. That's so you have at least a medium amount of knowledge on all the things that we do throughout the year. And also, uh, we'll use these skills throughout the year, so you need to learn them as we're going over them. So here we go on the 80s. I expect that you're going to be pausing the video a lot as you're going through. I'll be asking you to do that. Um, so you do like you do inside of class. The first thing you need to know are the place values. And a lot of students think that they know the place values. Um, most students do know the tenths, the hundredths, and the thousandths. Uh, but this is the ones place, and we do deal with that, the tens place and the hundreds place. So that will come into play as we're going throughout this unit. Rounding. Uh, students always seem like they know how to round, but there are some students that don't. So let's go through the rounding rules and make sure that you do, in fact, understand what's going on. You always look one place value smaller than what you need to round to. If you're rounding to the ones place, you need to look at the tenths place. So in this number, if we had to round to the ones place, that's where this three is. We have to round to that ones place. We would look to the tenths place. If it's a five or greater, we would round up and we get 124. If it's a four or lower, we would round off and we would have 123. Well, rounding to the ones place, you look at the tenths place, mention that again. If the tenths place is a four, three, two, one, or zero, you round off. So in this case, this is a four in the tenths place, so we round off to 123. If the tenths place is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, you round up, so 123.5. So this is greater than a four, it rounds to 124. Again, most students do seem to know about rounding rules. So again, if it's five or greater, you round up. If it's less than five, you round off. So let's do some rounding. We're gonna to go to the ones place with all of these. So what we do is we wanna to round to that place and we look at the tenths place. If the tenths place is a five or greater, we round up. So our tenths place number is definitely greater than a five, so our answer is one. Why don't you stop the video at this point in time and go ahead and do the rest of these, and then I will go through them when you start to play the video again. So in this place, we wanna to go to the ones place again. We look at the tenths place. The tenths place is a four, so we round off. In this place, we wanna to go to the ones place again, so we look at the tenths place. It's a four, so we round off. We want to go to the ones place, but we look at the tens place, it's a five, so the answer is a one. All right, in this one, we want to go to the tens place, so we round, want to round to that tens place. Why don't you pause the video and see how you do. Uh, keep playing the video, pausing the video as you're going through. So we want to go to the tens place, so we have to look at the hundreds place. The hundreds place is greater than a five. So it means we round up. So we have nine, 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 and then we round up to a five. We want to round to the tenths place, so we look at the hundredths place. The hundredths place is less than a five, so we round off. Want to round to the tenths place, so we look at the hundredths place. We don't care about these nines. They are not the hundredths place. We just look one place value smaller than what we need to round to. So we don't let all those nines influence our answer at all. So we got to round to the tenths place. That's this four right here. We look immediately behind that. It's a four, so we round off, and we get a four. 
Again, we want to go to the tens place, so we look at the hundreds place. So five point, and the hundreds place is greater than a five. It's a five or greater, so we round up, so that's 5.5. .5. All right, now we want to go to the hundredths place. Why don't you uh, pause the video, give yours a shot. I will go through all of these. All right, so if we're going to the hundredths place, we got to look at the thousandths place. If it's a five or greater, we round up. If it's four or lower, we round off. So we got 100.4, and now we look at the, the hundredths place, which is an eight here. We look at the thousandths place, which is a nine, so we round up, so four nine. We want to round to the hundredths place, so we look at the thousandths place. Thousandths place is greater than five, so it means we're going to round up. So we got seven, 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 seven. And all right, so let's look at this. So this is going to cause this to round up to a 10, which will cause the four to round up to a five. If I left it at that, I'd be going to the tenths place. We need to go to the hundredths place, so that's why that is the answer. That's one of the more tricky rounding questions. We want to go to the hundredths place. We want to go to the hundredths place, so we look at the thousandths place. Thousandths place is greater, uh, five or greater, so we round up. So 0 0.01. Again, we want to go to the hundreds place, so we look at the thousands place. It's a four. We don't care about all these other digits. We just look one place value smaller. The only digit that influences anything is the digit one place value smaller. It's a four, so 0 0.01. Doesn't matter um, about all those other digits. All right, now we're going to do something different called scientific notation. We're going to be using this a lot. It's a skill that you must own. These are two examples of scientific notation, so what it looks like. I'm going to teach you, take you all the way through it, following the sheet. So there are some rules, and these rules can be found on your unit pack cover uh, on the back side. It says there can only be one number in the front of a decimal point. So that means in scientific notation, uh, 1.23 times 10 to the fifth, 4.89 times 10 to the negative third. There can only be one number in front of the decimal point, and that one number can't be a zero. So that's kind of one of the main rules. Two, you need to count the number of place values. The decimal will be moved, so the decimal is behind the first non-zero. The number of place values, the decimal moves, is your exponent. So if we look at this example right here, this is scientific notation right here. How many spots do I need to move the decimal point? I needed to go one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots. So that's where this four comes from. I had to move it four spots, and that's where the exponent four comes from. Numbers less than one will have a negative exponent. So if this number was less uh, than one, we would have a negative exponent. And if numbers greater than one have a positive exponent. So this number is definitely greater than one, so the exponent is a positive one. Again, these rules are found on your unit pack cover and on your periodic table. This number is smaller than one. We need to recognize that. Writing it in scientific notation, we put the decimal behind the first non-zero number, so that's the 9. We write the times 10, and we had to go one spot, two spots, three spots, so that's where this 3 comes from. But since this number is less than 1, we put a negative exponent on the number. So 9.8701, we write times 10. And we had to go one spot, two spots, three spots. So that's the three. And since it's a number smaller than one, we put a negative exponent. Yeah, I mentioned that right there. Many of you have different calculators, and we need to be able to find this on your calculator. So what our goal is, 
is to type this into our calculator, 9.8701 times 10 to the negative third. The crazy thing is we never actually hit the multiplication sign, the 10 button, and some other button uh, to get an exponent. We use other buttons to do that, and it makes life a little bit simpler. So the first thing we would do is we would type in this into your calculator. Then we got to find what kind of calculator you actually have. So this calculator right here is the most common calculator. You would hit the second button, and then you have to go right down here above the seven, and it's EE. So we actually need the EE function on this calculator. On this next calculator, we actually hit the times 10 to the N button, which is right there. On this other calculator, it's kind of nice. They actually have an EE button right there for us. On the Casios, they have an EXP button down there in some varieties. And on other varieties of Casios, they have this times 10 to the X button. Those are all buttons uh, that you need to be aware of on your particular calculator. So if we're typing this into our calculators, we need to push or type in this number we need to hit the EE button, the EXP button, or the times 10 to the X button. Again, we don't actually push times, one, zero, and a button. We use a different button for that. We hit the negative sign, which is not the same thing as the subtraction sign. We push a three, and if we press enter, we should end up getting a decimal, 0.009870. Um, if that does not work for you, please come in for help. Most students can do math and chemistry, but sometimes the calculators get in the way and cause issues. So here we go. There's no need for calculators on this next part. So what we need to do is we need to write the following numbers in scientific notation. So again, we need to go 1.000. We put the decimal point after the first non-zero, so it goes after the one. How many places did we have to move it? We had to move it one spot, two spots, three spots, so times 10 to the third. Is this number smaller than one? Yes, it is smaller than one, so it gets a negative exponent sign. We need to move this decimal point behind the first non-zero, which is behind the nine. So we go 9.8000 times 10. And we had to move it one spot, so it's one. And this is a number smaller than one, so it gets a negative X point. Yes, we need these zeros, and we will talk more about that in the next couple of days. Why don't you try this next number, these next two numbers yourself, pause the video, try it, and I will go over them. So in this problem, it is implied that the decimal point is there even though there is no actual decimal point. So we need to move the decimal point from there all the way over there behind the one. So 1 1.23456 times 10, and we have to move it one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots, five spots. So that's where this five comes from. And since this number is definitely greater than one, it gets a positive exponent, so we just leave it as a five. It's implied that the decimal point is right there. So 1.1 times 10, and we had to move it one spot, so times 10 to the first. There's that work for you in a prettier version. All right, you try this and then uh, replay the screen. So stop the video, try these, and then see how you do. So in this problem, here's the decimal point right here. I need to move it right there. So eight. 0.765 times 10. I had to move it one spot, so that's where the one comes from. 
This whole number is less than one, so it gets a negative exponent. 1.05, decimal goes behind the first non-zero number, times 10, now I gotta think. This number is greater than one, so that means I get a positive exponent. I gotta move it one spot, so it's times 10 to the first. I have to move the decimal point behind the first non-zero, so 1.2 times 10. And I have to move it one spot, two spots, three spots, four, five, six, seven. Seven spots. This number is less than one, so I get a negative exponent. In this number, it's implied that the decimal point is right there, even though there's no actual decimal point. Decimal point goes behind the first non-zero times 10. I had to move it one spot, two spots, three, four, five spots, times 10 to the fifth. Again, there's a prettier version of what I just went over. Convert the following numbers that are in scientific notation to decimal form. So in other words, what is this number as a decimal? All right, so this requires a little bit more thought. So I have 9900. Zero, zero. Decimals right here, I need to make it one spot, two spots, three spots. So that would be my number. A little bit more difficult to go this way, but it kind of shows you what the number actually means. This zero is always shown just to point out that there is an actual decimal point there. Why don't you try the next three? Pause the video, try the next three. So we got one, two, three, four, six. Decimal points right there. This tells me the number's gotta be smaller than one. So I have to move it one spot, two spots. So that one is in the second spot. All right, so we gotta move this. It's a positive number since it's got a positive exponent. Right here's the decimal point. We gotta move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots, so that is our number. And in this number, we got the one point one. This has got a negative exponent, so it means it's smaller than one. So we have to go one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots. So there we move it. So one, two, three, four, that's where we get that negative exponent from. Again, there's a prettier version for you to look at. Convert the following numbers that are in scientific notation to the decimal form. So again, why don't you try these on your own? See how you do. So right there's the decimal, it's to the negative third. So it means I gotta make a number smaller than one. You can throw a whole bunch of zeros up here if you want to. I gotta move it one spot, two spots, three spots. So right there's my decimal. Seven, eight, nine. It's a number smaller than one. Right here's the decimal. I can throw a bunch of zeros up there to start off with if I want to. I gotta move it one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots, five spots, and get my number. So as negative five tells me I am one, two, three, four, five spots from the original decimal point. This next number is greater than one. 
I can throw up a bunch of zeros and erase the zeros I don't need. Right there's my decimal. I got to move it one, two, three, four, five, six. I can move the decimal point right there. I can get rid of that zero if I need to. And this number is a positive exponent, so I'm going to have a number greater than one. So eight, nine, zero, nine, eight, seven. Decimal point is right there. I need to move it one spot, two spots. So it's 890.987. So right there is your work. Numbers that are greater than one have exponents that are positive. So 5.5 times 10 to the eighth. This is a positive exponent and therefore would be a number greater than one. Well, numbers less than one have exponents that are negative. So if I put a negative sign, there would mean we have an extremely small number. So your homework, go to It's Learning, click on Boot Camps, and do the rounding and scientific notation quizzes that are there. You're aiming for a 90% or better on these so you understand these concepts. These concepts are used year round, so you really need to take them um, and understand them. Come in for help if you need so need to. Have a good day.